Hi, thanks for joining me. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how the technologies disrupting energy, transportation, food, and labor are the key to solving terrestrial ecosystem degradation. So let's dive right in. Terrestrial ecosystems, meaning ecosystems on land, have been impacted by humanity for centuries. And they've gotten absolutely clobbered since the Industrial Revolution. Major environmental problems on land include deforestation, desertification, habitat fragmentation and loss, soil erosion and contamination, invasive species, biodiversity loss, species extinction, and more. So, at the risk of stating the obvious, the common root cause of all of this destruction is simple. Our footprint on the landscape has damaged or outright destroyed the life that previously thrived there. Now, what's less obvious is that agriculture is by far the largest and most harmful culprit here. Our farms, pastures, and rangelands cover fully half of all land on the planet that is habitable once we exclude glaciers, deserts, bare rock, salt flats, and beaches. That's 35 times more than all other land use combined. All urban and suburban areas, all roads and railways and airports, all golf courses and sports fields, all mines and landfills, everything, all of those other land uses are basically just a rounding error compared to agriculture. And most surprising of all is that four-fifths, 80% of our agricultural land use is for animals, for raising them, grazing them, and growing crops to feed them. We use an area 10 times the size of France just to grow animal feed. So, the next time you're tempted to dismay about land footprint of mining or for electronics and solar panels or roads for transportation or for trash going to landfills, just remember, they should only get about 5% of your concern. The other 95% of your concern should be about the land footprint of agriculture and especially animal agriculture. Okay, so how do we solve all of the environmental problems that come from humanity's footprint on the landscape? Well, the technical details of how to restore ecosystems is the domain of restoration ecology. It's a robust and mature subdiscipline in the environmental sciences. But the limitation on restoring ecosystems is not a lack of technical understanding. We've had a pretty good idea of how to help landscapes heal for decades now. No, the real obstacles are logistical, not technical. And there are two of them. The first major obstacle is where? Where is the land for ecological restoration going to come from? We've had some modest success with both government and private land protection efforts where areas are purchased and then set aside for recovery. But the problem is that most of the world's environmentally degraded land is already being used by somebody. And that's why it's degraded. The second major obstacle is cost. Restoring ecosystems is expensive because it takes a lot of time and effort to decontaminate soils, replant forests, cultivate biodiversity, manage invasive species, and all the rest of it. So, if we want to solve problems of terrestrial ecosystem degradation, the real question is, how can we overcome those two key obstacles? And the answer, of course, is with the technologies that are now disrupting energy, transportation, food, and labor. For the first obstacle of where all the land for reforestation, conservation, preservation, and rewilding is going to come from, our research at Rethink X has shown that the food disruption by precision fermentation and cellular agriculture will free up about 80% of the land that's currently used for animal agriculture. 
our team coined the term precision fermentation, which is the use of microbes to produce proteins, fats, and other food ingredients that we otherwise mostly obtain from animals. The dynamics of this food disruption will be the same that we've seen dozens of times throughout history for disruptions of all kinds. As their cost and capabilities improve, products based on the new technologies will become overwhelmingly competitive compared to existing animal products. Cows and pigs and chickens won't disappear completely, but just like film cameras have been relegated to a tiny niche market because they can't compete on price or performance with digital imaging technology, animals won't be able to compete on price or performance with the new food technologies. The disruption of animal agriculture by precision fermentation and cellular agriculture will free up an area of land the size of the United States, China, and Australia combined for other uses, including, of course, for ecological restoration in all its forms. This is more land and more opportunity than most environmentalists have ever dreamed were possible. For the second obstacle of cost, our research at RethinkX has shown that the disruptions of energy, transportation, and labor will slash the cost not only of those things themselves as inputs into the ecological restoration supply chain, but also the cost of everything else across the global economy as well. Energy, transportation, and labor are foundational sectors precisely because they go into everything else. So the superabundance of clean energy, clean transportation, and machine labor that result from these disruptions, they will make ecological restoration at a continental scale vastly more feasible than it is today. Indeed, far more feasible than most environmentalists have ever imagined were possible. And that is how we solve deforestation, desertification, habitat fragmentation and loss, soil erosion and contamination, invasive species, biodiversity, species extinction, and all the rest of those terrestrial ecological challenges. And all of this is not hundreds of years away or requiring Star Trek technology, but starting within the next two decades as the disruptions of energy, transportation, food, and labor unfold. Now it really is that simple. But simple does not mean easy. Anyone who's gone to the gym for a workout knows that. We have hard, hard work to do, and even harder choices to make. But we don't need hundreds of new technologies and policies. We don't need reports and plans the size of the Encyclopedia Britannica to tell each local community how to meet these challenges as if we were trying to land astronauts on Mars. All we need to do is recognize that the disruption of animal agriculture by precision fermentation and cellular agriculture will free up a huge amount of land between now and the 2040s and to get ready to repurpose a big chunk of that land to ecological restoration. And that is totally doable. Well, that's it for today. If you value our work, please help pass it on. We need to reach more people. We need to create more awareness and inspire more optimism and agency. So share this and our other videos and publications. Hit all of those like and subscribe and repost buttons and whatnot and encourage others to do so as well. It really does make a difference. It's how this message goes exponential. Thanks everyone for watching. And just remember, the future is brighter than you think. We'll see you all next time. Take care.